Hello, everybody. This is Tommy at World at War Comics, and today we have another amazing show for you today. Today, we're speaking with Quento Comics, but before we get into that, you got to hit that subscribe button. Please hit the notify um, ring. That way, you get notified when we drop amazing interviews. Um, and then also remember, Cien Chili's is our sponsor of the podcast, and you could help out the podcast and have amazing hot sauces just by going to cnchilies.com. That's C I E N C H I L E S dot com. And if you put comics at checkout, you save 15%. I promise you, this hot sauce is amazing. All right, without further ado, we're speaking with Quinto Comics. Um, this comic brand is an all-female, all-Asian team that has put together the story, The Mask of Halea. This comic book is absolutely awesome. The artwork is absolutely incredible. And of that entire team, we're speaking with three of them today. We're speaking with Waverly Lim. Um, she is the producer over at Quinto Comics. We're speaking to uh, Minerva Fox, who she was the artist on issue four, but she's one of the lead artists for Quinto on other projects as well. And then we're speaking with the lead writer for Quinto Comics, Caitlin. So I cannot wait for you to see this interview. We had a blast. Can't wait to have them on again, but make sure you're going to quintocomics.com. Check out the Masca Halea. They are going to Comic-Cons all over the place. So as you're at a Comic-Con, look for them. I guarantee they're probably going to be there. They are the busiest, hardest working group I have met and uh, pick up the mask of Halea. All right, without further ado, here we go. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of World at War Comics podcast. We have a very special group of folks here today from Quinto Comics. We're going to be talking Halea and we're going to be talking all kinds of other stuff. Thank you so much for joining. Maybe we could just kind of go around the horn and, and start there. Um, Caitlin, you're on my top left. Is it okay if we start with you and we'll just kind of go like this? Sure. Awesome. Um, hello, my name is Caitlin Fahilan and I am the head writer of Quento Comics, uh, particularly the Mask of Halea fantasy series. And um, yeah, is there anything else? You want to no, know? That's perfect. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, excellent. <laughs> How about you, Waverly? Hey, everyone. I'm Waverly Lim. I am a co founder of Quinto Comics and COO. Nice. Alongside my beautiful mother, we are a mother daughter duo. <laughs> Sweet. I love it. I love it. And Minerva, how are you? I am doing great. Uh, my name is Minerva Fox. I am the artist here for Quinto Comics, specifically for issue four. Mm -hmm. And going forward other places. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having us. Well, awesome. I'm so excited to have you here. I got to meet all of, well, a couple of you on the Saturday of San Diego Comic-Con. Um, I went ahead and bought- a crazy day. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy day. We were talking about that earlier about how crowded the floor was, which I think as comic creators, that was super exciting. Yes. Um, and I heard that from a lot of creators. So I'm so glad that you had a successful San Diego Comic-Con. Um, I was able to purchase all five issues, and so I did get through them, and it was very exciting. I didn't even realize it was on um, globalcomics.com. You could also read it there. Um, I'm a member, so I could read everything, you know, whenever I want. And I was super excited to read it there, although I had all the physical. I've had this um, issue number one because it is uh, um, autographed by your mother, Waverly. Uh, yeah. Cecilia. Yep. So I, I had that here. I had it in a nice case, and it was in a box with all my other sign, but... Uh, I brought nice. it out so we could um, make sure that everyone knows what to look for. We'll talk about the website that they could go to if they want to purchase it. Um, but maybe we could kind of start about, let's start at the beginning. Um, when did all of you, and maybe we'll just go in the same order. We'll just kind of go around the horn if that's okay. Caitlin, when did you really get into comic books? Have you always been a comic fan and wanting to write comic books? Or were you just a fan of writing, had a passion for writing and kind of fell in the comic books? So I think it happens both ways in my experience for a lot of people. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Like, um, <laughs> I remember the first comic book I read was like this really old book of Bible stories. My oh, very cool. religious mother had yeah. me like, you know, as soon as I could read. I'm re Actually, even before I could read, she was teaching me Bible stories through comics. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, when I kind of came of age, I started really getting into manga, Japanese comics. Mm -hmm. And um 
you know, like Sailor Moon and Card yeah. Captain Sakura and Evangelion and stuff like that. And uh, I think when I got older, no, even when I was really young, I always enjoyed writing. I didn't know that I was going to get into comics until I really met Cecilia Waverly's mom. Yeah. And the assignment was like, do you want to write a comic book series on a Filipina teenage superheroine? And at the time, you know, it was going to be a whole bunch of writers in one writer's room and then it kind of just ended up becoming me <laughs> it was kind of daunting because even though I'd read comics American comics and um, Japanese comics growing up I didn't really know what the format for it was um, only to find out there is no official uh, script writing format for comics and yeah. I guess there are pros and cons to that mm -hmm. um, also, you know, Minerva, I'm sure you know about this. When you work with different artists, different artists have different preferences for how they want the script to come. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it can be kind of crazy adapting because at this point, we've had a number of artists. Yeah, and, um, yeah it's uh, it's been a challenging but very uh, rewarding journey. Let's put it like that. And uh, Jen and I, Jen is the editor. Mm -hmm. We just have to work with whatever is thrown at us constantly, yeah. always shifting and trying to adjust and learn. And I wish there was like a comic book writing school that I can say attend. <laughs> I did not attend any such school. So. Yeah, yeah. My, That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so you threw issue five issues. Is there any other comic that I'm not aware of that uh, Quinto does? Or as of right now, it's just the Mask of Halea? Well, yeah. I just turned in issue six. Let's put it like Sweet. that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Am I, am I allowed to say anything, Waverly? Or? Well, I what I can <laughs> say is that we have a, uh, the Mask of Felia is our very first series, our flagship mm -hmm. series of Quento comics that we launched with. And we are in the process of developing a new series nice. um, that Minerva is going to also be a part of. So that's Sweet. really exciting. Yeah. Um, us and it's going to be focused on a different you know mythology within the philippines uh different characters all of that good stuff slowly building out our own kcu if you will yeah ah, that's KCU. awesome <laughs> that's yeah. awesome well thank you caitlin how about you waverly uh when did uh you get into comic books and then maybe you could add since you and your mother are the ones that started this uh this publishing company when did the publishing company become part of your plans yeah, absolutely. So I actually did not grow up reading comic books mm -hmm. at all. But I yeah. had my mom who did growing up and my brother who was just obsessed with any sci-fi fantasy superhero <laughs> uh, movie book under the sun. He also um, reads a lot of manga as well. So mm -hmm. I, re I already had his influence. Um, and just growing up, I would always, you know, be at, you know, the premiere to that, you know, one superhero movie that would come <laughs> out um fantasy uh whatever it was based on you know the popular book ip comic book ip at the time so um not necessarily a reader when i was mm -hmm. growing up but definitely in the whole genre of it all and all the different connecting mediums um but i grew up with um a film uh theater background mm -hmm. acting i went to school uh at UCLA uh, for theater, film, and television. Mm -hmm. And so I've just always loved storytelling in whatever, you know, form or medium mm -hmm. that might be. Um, so when my mom, short story, uh, long story short, yeah. um, my mom and I came out to LA about when I was 16, 17 years old. And um, the whole uh, reason why we even conceived of um, Quinto Comics in the first place was um, the fact that um, we were in a um, organization called Philam Creative um, that also Caitlin uh, was a part of as well. Mm -hmm. And we just saw all these really talented Asian, um, you know, creators in our community, whether they were directors, producers, writers, makeup, special effects, VFX, actors, right? Like everyone under the sun. Yeah. And we're like, there's not enough seats at the table for people who look like us that mm -hmm. one are authentically, you know, these big networks are authentically actually telling our stories and B, that right. are giving us the opportunities to, to do so. Right. Um, and we're like, you know, rather than complaining about the problem, let's just be the solution and do yeah. that. Um, and just knowing like, kind of like how, and again, like the Hollywood models changing, we're obviously right now in a strike where, you know, so yeah. much is up in the air and um, sure. just the way doing things are changing. But um, my mom and I know that, you know, with 
you know, any film, a lot of times there, you know, it comes from, you know, some sort of popular IP. And we just thought, why not do, why, why not comics? It's yeah. so universal. Yeah. Everyone loves a good story. Everyone loves beautiful artwork. And um, we had found that there was such a talent of, and plethora of talent that was in the Philippines and here in the States, mm-hmm. Filipina, Asia, uh, Asian American artists, just yeah. everything under the sun. There's so much talent there that is yet to be tapped into and truly explored and and elevated and and put on, you know, like the national stage, the global stage. And um, my mom and I just wanted to contribute to that. And so Mm -hmm. we, we, we decided on comics um, because it's something tangible that people can see. It's almost like literally like reading a a storyboard for even animation, if you will. And that's kind of our approach to um, when we created the comic books is we wanted it to be like, you were almost watching like a still it's very artistically different than, you know, the traditional, like America, we kind of like have a fusion of Western and Eastern mm-hmm. style in our, in our comic book, which is fun. And then also just from the lens of having an all female team brings another perspective and another element to it. So kind yeah. of all of that is all those different pieces and bits and elements are the reason why Quinto yeah. Comic came to be. Well, that's awesome. Can I just do one follow up question for you, Waverly? Was it always in the plan to have an all female um, Asian group that was working within Quinto? Was that kind of the goal right when you created the company? You know what? It kind of came about in a really organic way. It wasn't like mm-hmm. we were like, it's going to be all Asian, all female in this. Like we just realized like it started with the story and we wanted to yeah. have more stories that were representative of us and our culture, sure. more stories with strong female leads at the forefront, strong female Asian leads at the forefront. Mm-hmm. And we're like, well, in order to authentically tell those stories, it starts with people with those perspectives, with those backgrounds who look like us. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom's not here, but um, I know that uh, a lot of times she tells people that, you know, she came from, uh, she left her job at a, you know, fortune 200 company in corporate America to mm-hmm. come out here with me to pursue my dreams. And in that, she, you know, saw a lot of times which women were, you know, not, were not allowed to have a seat at the table where their voices right. weren't where they were sitting there, but, you know, they mm-hmm. were silenced or where they didn't really, they weren't able to, you know, share their thoughts and ideas. And she just thought, why, why can't that be created? Why can't I right. show, you know, women, an all Asian woman company can be successful yeah. um, and everyone's voices be heard and everyone mm-hmm. have a seat at the table and that be possible and that actually be a success story. And so mm-hmm. it kind of came about organically also from her experiences of just kind of being a lawyer in like corporate mm-hmm. America and being like, I want to create a workplace environment in which it is different and yeah. the stuff that I wish that I experienced. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for letting me know that. That's great. All right, Minerva, how about you? When did this all start for you? Oh, gosh. All right. So I am 100% born and bred a uh, nerd of any <laughs> of a lot of a lot of things, just very generic, everything went straight. And my first real, real tangible first memory right out the gate comic book experience was 92 with mm-hmm. Death of Superman trade paperback yeah. mo- novel. Yeah. I stole it from my brother, read it cover to cover many times <laughs> over, just going over the story yeah. and going, realize this can happen. Um, and then that just sprung board from there. In addition to experiencing Sailor Moon when it first came out in the, in American dubs um, with DIC in eighth grade, like 95, 96, and realizing that was originally a comic and going, whoa, and knowing that I can draw and I've been drawing Disney and um, DreamWorks mm-hmm. style with Anastasia, with the Disney Renaissance, with Beauty and the Beast and everything. I could draw those, no, no problem. And then find, finding Sailor Moon um mm-hmm. Akira when that came out holy cow that was breathtaking <laughs> yeah. and um uh, and saying like I actually prefer this more because uh, I didn't realize that Akira was 100% an Asian thing yeah. um and then Sailor Moon was from an Asian was, was an Asian or- origin mm-hmm. and that it's black hair dark eyes pretty yeah. awesome and just came, uh, just started working off of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I've been working in the comics for a lot for yeah, maybe maybe a decade. Um, just coming That's back awesome. from um, from formal from formal college mm-hmm. uh, training with uh, with illustration. I'm I'm an illustrator by um, by design, I guess yeah. by instruction. And then um, YouTube taught me the rest. Yeah. When it comes to- when it came to comic making with gutters, timings, pacing, storytelling, all that other great stuff and yeah. finding all the, finding my comic mutuals over 
on social media and just learning off of them as well has been just yeah. incredibly eye-opening as well. And then That's I came awesome. met these guys and I'm like, and I'm with my people. Yeah. Well, it's really funny, Minerva. You should share how you found us. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. How'd that happen? Uh, C2E2, Mar- the August one. Um, mm-hmm. back in 2022 ish, I want to say. Um, so I was just doing my my prep work for C2E2, scrolling through social media, seeing any who I should hit up. Mm-hmm. And there was a there was an ad campaign for for Quento where I just organically came to it, and I was like, no way, Filipino <laughs> comic publishing. It's like they look pretty good. The art was pretty awesome. Yeah. And so they, I I noted their booth number, and then when I had a breath. And I was able to get away from my table. Mm-hmm. I just stomped my butt all over mm-hmm. over there and said, "Hi, um, can I have some your comics? I want to totally get into this." And I was talking with Cecil. No, I was talking with Meriden, our marketing rep. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes, awesome. And I and then I bought it. I talked with Cecilia a little bit. It's like, "Wow, this is actually pretty awesome." I read it. I um, and then I text after when I that night I talked. With my cousin and say hey get, take a i snapped a picture of the mask of Ilya and sent it to my cousin she's like do you want a copy it's like yes i do want a copy yeah. like can you get a couple more because i uh for uh, some of our other cousins like that's no problem yeah. but like three additional copies <laughs> and then i said oh wait cecilia um i'm also an artist here's my portfolio so i did yeah. a c- complete wayne gretzky and shot my shot because yeah. i'm not going to miss this yeah and she said let's talk yeah and we talked and I'm here because so cool. I harassed my way in here. <laughs> Not harassed. <laughs> I, love- <laughs> I, and I sure. just think that's so cool because I mean, yeah. just we're so like online and digitized these days. Yeah. Um, what I've learned from just running the comic con circuit for the last, you know, kind of year and a half now mm-hmm. is it's really cool just to meet really dope people that are you yeah. know from all over the country doing really great stuff who you like may have not met otherwise. So for sure, for sure. Yeah, and it's, yeah. I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Minerva, but I think, you know, 10, 15 years ago was very normal to take your portfolio to like a DC or a Marvel or something like that. Now they really have shied away from that. They usually don't accept anything at shows. So, you know, on the indie side, I still think it's quite open and available. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, some of the larger companies, they just don't do that anymore. I don't even know how you get your your work seen by them. I guess they have to find you if they're really looking. I don't know how well, that so works. Any, unwritten Asian, rule. any Asian female artists who we happen to be at a Comic-Con that we are at, please. Yeah, yeah come by. Portfolios <laughs> are way, our way. That is awesome. That is, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> it happened yeah. to me. You could have to you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so awesome. And how long have you been with uh, Quinto now, Minerva? Uh, just about oh my gosh just started talks about a year ago oh cool say. so very yeah. good but a- actively working for the past six months that is awesome that is awesome yeah. well caitlin as far as the storyline goes my understanding just from reading um in the front pages um the story was actually created by cecilia if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong and then you're the writer of that story did i say that wrong uh she came up with the concept oh the concept concept. okay gotcha she wanted she wanted female teenage super heroine who was a nice filipina yeah um and then like the backstory of some sort of relic having some you know uh, she kind of liked this idea of a relic that has some kind of powers Mm -hmm. and then a personal story actually that happened um Uh at a at one at a as a, at a Lola's one of my Lola's funerals mm. um and she was there was this ring that I was really attached to that as soon as one of my Lola's passed my grandmother um I like immediately remember when I was like 12 years old that like I wanted that ring that she had always worn and my mom had always kind of pondered on that moment that I had as a kid and was like what if that held something more and obviously you know when you pass down things from generation to generation, you take that wisdom along with you. And so she thought that that was a really cool theme um, that we could embed into the story. And then I'll let Caitlin tell the rest, but yeah, she (laughs) completely took that idea and blew it up into this, you know, large, gigantic, you know, epic storyline that she created along with the mythology. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Caitlin, how did you come up with the story that surrounded that one, the necklace in this case, right? But the, the ring, in Waverly's case. 
uh oh gosh um i don't know exactly i think that i went online and i mm -hmm. knew that uh filipino you know the philippines is a very um there's there are many different ethnic groups within the mm -hmm. philippines there's like over 7500 islands alone and many different languages so mm -hmm. uh, i know that a lot of their pre-colonial folk religions or mythology are incredibly interesting and vast and varied so I was doing research on some goddesses and gods, and I came across this, um, there was like a Bicolano moon ritual, mm -hmm. and the embodiment of that, some say, is this goddess named Halia, and there are many stories involving the moon and Halia and Bakunawa, the sea serpent, but um, one of them is this idea that she has a, a like a golden mask. Mm -hmm. which might be, you know, leftover from some ancient funerary traditions in the Philippines and in China. They they would put like a golden mask on the corpse mm -hmm. uh, as a kind of, you know, like a, it's a rite of passage into the afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, you know, what if it wasn't a ring, but it was a mask yeah. that is left behind. And um, the protagonist uses the mask to embody a kind of reincarnation of this mm -hmm. moon goddess, right? Mm -hmm. So from there... I kind of started branching out into um, like, I didn't want it to just be a typical chosen one story type of thing. Like I kind of wanted it to be like, there are two protagonists in mm. a way. Yeah. Um, and you thought it was just about one girl, but it's, it's not, actually, yeah. yeah, it's, 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 there's like a focus on two women, but mm. a, Surrounding these women are these other characters that yeah. are also integral to the overarching story, yeah. right? And it's it's supposed to mimic a uh, kind of shadow and light, uh, the li lightness and the dark side of the moon. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all part of the the mechanism through which the story is being told. And yeah. um, I uh, initially, you know, we wanted it to be a Filipino American girl, but as soon as the first issue was written, um, the editor and I were talking about how it would kind of be a disservice to set it in America when mm -hmm. so much of the culture and history is in the Philippines. Right. So we kind of changed it so that it's about, you know, it's a coming of age story about this fish out of water kind of girl who discovers who she is by going back. And it's supposed to mimic um, the fact that Filipinos, their histories have kind of been erased mm -hmm through colonialism and a lot of other things. And we sure. have to rediscover that by going back and mm -hmm. seeing what's there. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. No, it does. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what's going on there. Is, is there yes. a, oh, go ahead, Waverly, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say beautifully sad. Oh. I think <laughs> that's something that kind of resonates with all of us on the team. Just being in America and anyone going back to one's homeland for the yeah. first time, I think is, just a really special experience that I think like everyone, you know, at some point in their life, you know, takes and rediscovers and really embeds themselves in their culture in kind of a new way, which is, which is yeah. fun. Yeah, I also think though, that it's also a rediscovery for Filipinos themselves. Mm -hmm. Like for example, there's like, you know, uh, a lot of Filipinos can't really speak their language. Like yeah. pure Tagalog would be the equivalent of walking around speaking like 16th century Shakespeare, you know, mm -hmm. usually a lot of, <laughs> People who speak Tagalog, they speak a combination of Taglish, which mm -hmm. is Tagalog and English. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the language that we primarily use in the series is Cebuano, um, mm -hmm. because I think that's put, that that might even be more widely used than Tagalog itself. But the idea behind it is that Filipinos themselves are also at a loss for their own culture, mm -hmm. and it's discovery on the parts of all people, you know, who are tied to this land and. That's why we also decided that we wanted to explore other characters, not just Mari or her cousin Isla, but yeah. all the people who are part of this. Um, it's like an intricate puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to lead to this greater understanding. Yeah. You'll have to read to find out what that is. But exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's all part of the plan. Anyways. That's all it. part of Caitlin's <laughs> master plan that she's yeah. <laughs> masterfully crafted. Going very slowly, but we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> we're like working as hard as we can. Stick with us. There's so much good stuff coming. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I will say that we are yeah. in the process of issue six currently, and our current artists who are storyboarding um, and starting line art for it um, have been doing a fantastic job. Yeah. <laughs> I've I think, been peeking uh, on their stuff, and I'm loving it so really far. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Minerva, if I could go back to you as the artist, um, and I ask everybody that comes on the show this, that's a creator, because I, I do think there's an important relationship between a writer and an artist, right? Because especially within comic books, right, you have panels, you're, you're kind of limited on how much of the story you could actually tell in words. Therefore, the art really needs to tell a big portion of the story, too. So I like to think of it being like a dance between the artist and the, the writer, right? And they have to be on the same page. Because as a comic book fan, you could really tell, um, and it usually happens in the big two companies because, you know, they have so many employees and people are coming and going constantly that as a writer, you might be on a series for a year or a year and a half, but you might have 12 different artists during that time frame just because people are coming and going constantly. Whereas in an indie environment, there's more likelihood that you might work with the same artist and the same writer more often. Um, for a whole host of reasons, right? Let's be real, mm -hmm. right? Cost, all those other things is a little bit easier when you find someone, if they're willing to stay with you, you could kind of create that continuity. But I think it's really important that the the art and the writing do have that kind of a dance. Is that your experience too, Minerva? And how do you prepare to be able to tell part of that story from an art standpoint to help support the writing? Yes, it is a dance and flexibility is 100% key. I'm yeah. never without looking for reference or mm -hmm. ha not having the original script with yeah. whatever notes I've scribbled versus, mm -hmm. and also whatever storyboard and other assets that are available. Mm -hmm. So I can help interpret my own, own interpretation. But if I feeling really stuck, like I'm conflicted, I'm like, Oh, I want, I think he needs, he needs to have a more bitchy face versus a, I want to have a more teasing face. Mm -hmm. Those are um, just because of the line delivery and the context mm -hmm. of the entire scene might, can be re read that way i've yeah. actually uh reached out to you caitlin and to um jen like on this one kid's face is he teasing her mm. uh, or is he actually kind of like are you weird too <laughs> kind of situation right and uh, and i wanted to really make sure that like i don't want him to is he a bully or is he not or is he just also weird too because mm -hmm. um, that how you say it is also how you draw it sure and i have and that like those type of clarifications and be able to say uh just poke them on discord and everything hey what does this mean yeah is yeah. Uh, is actually pretty awesome so yeah cool. yeah i will say that it is um such a blessing to have an all asian female team because yeah. the attention to detail is <laughs> quite quite good <laughs> on both the writing at writers and the artist side sure. which makes it really exciting because it's like every little like what's in this bag what's on the street corner like yeah. how are the, how are, can we find more ways to throw in easter eggs or mm -hmm. uh, like foreshadow certain things yeah um, which is really exciting because everyone on the team cares about that attention to detail so that when people get to issue 15 they can go back to issue two and be like oh wow it was yeah. there from all the way back <laughs> That is very cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is very cool. We're like a global team, and ideally, I'd be there with the artists, you know, like yeah. going through everything piece by piece. But, um, you know, we have artists in the Philippines, and mm -hmm. Minerva, you're in Chicago, right? Yeah, and there's like time differences, and on top of that, we have a, a schedule that just moves forward like a an engine that won't stop, you know, <laughs> and everybody knows it, right? So as much as I wish I could go back and forth, back and forth, it, it's always a matter of like, okay, we got to turn this in by the deadline, you know? So sometimes we have to just, some, there are some L's that must be taken, but for the most part, we all try to work together, even if it means, you know, messaging someone in the middle of the night yeah. and hammering things out by having a last minute meeting. It's a lot. So mm, pretty important. I would assume, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then as far as kind of the marketing and ensuring that the comic book um, gets into the hands of potential readers, Waverly, what are some of the things that you and your team have been able to do? Like, have you reached out to maybe Diamond or Lunar to um, hopefully get it within the preview magazine so that stores can order and can fans go to their local comic book store and ask for it? Absolutely. So um, that is kind of a really exciting transition that we um, are actually in the process of, you know, expanding nice. our reach and our distribution, which is really exciting for us. Um, originally, when we first started out, I mean, my mom and I kind of wanted to get a feel of like, do, do people even like this? Do people like this? Story? 
but like our art do our yeah. like are people gonna buy this are people gonna take a chance on us and so um those larger distributors you know they take a cut after you go yeah. through them and the comic book stores and all of that yeah. you know it's, it's it's a tough business i'm not gonna lie yeah. and so yeah. um for the first year we only launched uh in march of 2022 we kind of were going you know comic mm -hmm. book direct to comic book stores. I'm in the Southern California region as well as uh, Caitlin, we're both in LA. So yeah. we were literally going to like, I'm not sure where you are, Tommy. I'm near Palm Springs. So I'm here in SoCal too, okay, my yeah, whole yeah. life. So you so. might know some of these. We were going to, you know, the big guys out here in LA, the uh, Golden Apple, Collector's yeah. Paradise, Comic Bug, all of, you know, just Southern California regions and being like, hey, like, let's test it out in your store. Um, and we actually got um, a um, email from uh, one of the stores that was like, all right, your books are selling. We don't need to do consignment anymore. And we're oh, like, sweet. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, and good it's really feeling. cool. Yeah, and it's really cool uh, to see, you know, the to see the evolution of it. And you yeah. know, stores are actually, you know, requesting for the inventory now, and that they are selling. So that was a really good sign for us, um, and made us uh, more comfortable with the idea of, you know, going uh, distributing, you know, more nationwide, and, and that we can hopefully get those numbers with the help of um, all of, you know, the support of the fans. And so um, we recently, this has not been announced on social media, so I guess it can be announced on your podcast, Ooh. but we signed, <laughs> unless I'm mistaken, and I said this somewhere else, but for now, Tommy, I'm going to remember that it's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. We have signed with Clover Press. So we are part of the Clover Press publishing family. We are so, so excited yeah. um, to be um, a part of their uh, family and to have them really just elevate Quento Comics to the next level um, and bring us, um, bring our graphic novels into bookstores and bring the uh, floppies moving forward into comic book stores through the yeah. distribution channels of the diamonds and the lunars. Um, so wow. that's a really exciting um, win for us this year that we're just that's excited. Huge people can you know have access to the comic books because me and cecilia doing it you know going into each little store and yeah. like when we're going to sf or sending it to the one you know filipino there's a filipino bookstore in michigan that has us yeah. um comic book store um and so it's nice to have support on that end just because mm -hmm. uh my mom and i had kind of just been front loading that stuff for a while um and making sure that it, this was genuinely something that people wanted to see at the end of the day and you know mm -hmm. it wasn't just a crapshoot at the end of the day so um with the support of all the readers that i've picked up the mask of Flea thus far um yeah. we've now been able to sign with the publisher and, and moving forward um you know having you know larger distribution which is really exciting for us so That's on top of exciting. physical comic book stories you can of course find us on global comics yeah. as well which is really exciting and um, hopefully some other um, digital avenues in the future that are currently being pursued, wink, wink, that we will be announcing very soon, so. And can you purchase comics on your own website? Yes, you can. Yep. You can purchase physical copies at www.quentocomics.com. Yeah. Um, and then soon as well, moving forward on the Clover Press site as well. Sweet, sweet. Now, what is the the schedule for like Comic Cons look like throughout the year? Do you have like a set of certain ones that you're you're planning to be at every single year, or are you just kind of seeing what happens and, and kind of following well, that way? Kind of both. Uh -huh. So we kind of last year we did um, we did a set of um, of, of of conventions. Mm -hmm. um, and this year we wanted to do. Um, a, a whole another set of conventions just so we could get a feel of the landscape like what the audience is what the crowds like the layout of the conventions yeah. all of that good stuff because you know the different conventions are owned by different companies and they all have a different look and feel to them different energy different crowd different audience demographic um so last year we did florida supercon um in miami c2e2 uh, long beach and la this year we started off with WonderCon san diego which was such a huge, huge success. Anyone listening from San Diego yeah. um, that has been brought over by Tommy that's listening to us right now, just anyone who brought at San Diego, thank you, because mm -hmm. we literally sold out of our of our bundles of issues yeah. one through five um, that we brought that was over 1,300 copies. So that was wow. really exciting for us just as huge. Like that we were able to, you know, get those numbers, which uh, yeah. has really honestly what the reasons, like the fans are the reasons why we're able to continue on production. Sure. So um, yeah. that just from the bottom of our hearts, we, we really are just so, so, so thankful for the support. And then we are going to New York Comic Con in October. Oh, wow. Birthday. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about that, that I get to travel to the East Coast. That's your birthday too, you said, Waverly? It's going to be, yeah, it's around my oh. birthday. I think there's 12, what are, what are 12 through 14. Or? Yeah, the, the 16, I think it's like four days. 
It's the weekend yeah. before my birthday. So oh, anyway, gotcha. using That's it exciting. as a way as a birthday trip as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so, uh, and then we're gonna end at LA Comic Con as well. We all had a great, great experience at LA Comic Con last year, and it was just a great way to kind of round out the year and close it out. And then hopefully next year we'll hit San Diego again, maybe New York, other, you know, keep keep going on the on the circuit of that. Well, that's pretty exciting. That's that's awesome. Because it's a lot of work. Do you have a favorite uh, convention that you love going to? Yeah, obviously San Diego. I'm pretty close to San Diego, about an hour and 45 minutes. Um, I also work down there. The company I work for is headquartered there. And I've been working there for, I'm getting old, but probably almost 20 years off and on different companies that I work with. So I love San Diego. It's such a beautiful place. Obviously, the weather is almost perfect all year round. Um, So yeah, I mean, San Diego, it just... The crowd, it gets me a little anxious sometimes. It's just so crowded and it's very oh, yeah. expensive down there too. If you're trying to stay for like the whole five days. Um, but it's close enough for me where I could go down there and come right back. And it's it's awesome. And that's what I did. I just went for one day. It was a little overwhelming. Um, of course, I had to get my uh, McFarland toys that were exclusive for San Diego Comic-Con. I, but was, then- I was overwhelmed preview night on Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. I was coming down with a bit of a cold and yeah. my voice was starting to be gone. And by literally the next day, it was gone. If you head yeah. to our social media page, you'll literally see me holding a stick that says, I lost my voice. Please buy our comics. <laughs> I did see that. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True story. That really yeah, genuinely yeah. happened. <laughs> No, it, it's craziness. And I think uh, New York, although it's not as big as far as people, it feels more crazy because I think it's at the Javits Center. And, mm-hmm. you know, in New York, you're walking everywhere. I Whereas have it, no idea what to yeah. expect in New York this year. So if you have any tidbits for that Comic-Con specifically. Yeah. Comfortable shoes. Very yeah. comfortable shoes. Yes. Yeah. Just wear very comfortable shoes. It's craziness. And you're walking everywhere and you're carrying your comics with you. It's just, it's hard to get in and out of. That's the thing. I don't know if anyone talks about like how difficult it is to load in and out. Every convention is different. Every convention center is different. The regulations and what they can do and they let you do versus not do. Now you can't have things on the carpet versus now you can't go through this exit and that. Like it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know if everyone knows, like when they go into these conventions, all the hoops and things yeah. that people at these booths like yeah. had to like jump through to like get everything. <laughs> and a lot of the convention centers um, are are managed by union companies. So yes. there's certain places within where you're not allowed to like unload a box or anything like that. A union employee has to do it. So to your point, right, you have to really know all those rules to understand yes. how to work everything. So that way you don't miss anything or you're late on something. Right. So it, it, it's a lot of work. Like you, you have to have one person dedicated just to really understand comic cons in order to be on top of it. So oh, we are learning that the hard way. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> San Diego, I think we were like setting up like we got our all of our stuff set up like as yeah. the door. Yeah. We were we were that sure booth. We're always that booth. And I we're trying to get better at it. <laughs> I'm sure you weren't the only one. I'm sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now, as far as like visiting um comic book shops to maybe like do signings, um, Caitlin or Minerva, even in Chicago, have you had that opportunity to do some of that as well um with your comic? Yeah, like back in the early days, I think mm-hmm. we were at, uh, what was it, the comic book we really? Comic or, bug, yes, the comic book, yes, the comic Yeah, bug. Uh, we had a few of those and, you know, every, yeah, there, there have been a couple where we just show up and sign people's copies. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it, a, a lot of our, uh, yeah, a lot of things come in when we do conventions, like so We've gone to uh, LA Comic Con, as Waverly said. Wonder. Mm-hmm. Um, we've gone to the San uh, the San Francisco Filipino Book Festival last year, mm-hmm. which was amazing. Yeah. So we do a lot of signings there, yeah, and then there. It's year. really awesome. it's definitely. I will say um, the comic book stores really make an effort to reach out to us, um, especially even on you know whether it's a Women's History Month or Asian sure. Pacific Islander Heritage or, you know, Filipino American heritage, uh, you know, in October, there's all these different months in which um, it's really great to kind of, you know, showcase all of, you know, that talent that you're kind of celebrating that month. And so um, sometimes you'll catch us at like one of those at the different comic book stores, which is really great that they um, make the, you know, concerted effort to uh, do that outreach. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
How about you, Minerva? Have you had that chance in the Chicago area yet? No, You're kind of all by to. yourself out there though, right? I think San Diego was the first time you were signing with us, right? With with you guys. Yeah, definitely. And that was super fun. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just trading the gold pens back and forth between <laughs> you, me, and, and Cecilia. It was great. That is awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, what else should we cover? Um, is there anything that we missed that you would like people that are listening to know? That, that's for any of you. Um, as far as um, Quinto Comics, um, we kind of talked about... Um, the website, we know that um, most fans could go to the lo local comic book store and they could ask um, for the mask of Halea um, and they should be able to order it from a distributor. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get this comic book in your hands. And I could tell you as someone who just read it, it is fabulous. I mean, the writing is incredible. The art is incredible. Um, you, you're not going to be disappointed uh, by picking this up for sure. One question I do have, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, is there any other comic book company that is all female led? You're the first one that I'm aware of that is 100% female led on top of that Asian, but just female led in general. I'm not there sure is, if there one exists. There is one that found us at San Diego Comic-Con oh, cool. that was all female led. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we want to reach out. Hopefully we can get like some sort of like, you know, female content creator, comic, a female comic book creator sure. panel. So we definitely want to set that yeah. up. For, like just show, you know, everyone in you know, the Where are they? they really, was it Hex 11 or? Yes, I think Hex yes. Comics. Yeah, 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 Hex 11. Yeah, but they've, they've been around for a while. Um, mm. but they're not Asian. <laughs> yeah so we yeah we say all asian all female but yeah. there definitely are other female led ones yeah. I, i'm almost positive i'll have to uh, yeah I'm almost, I'm almost certain that our team is you know not that it's a contest but i'm almost yeah. certain our team is larger than theirs like they're they're relatively small compared to our the the sheer number of members on our team oh gotcha yeah, yeah. yeah. so um yeah That's definitely exciting. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that um we've done uh we have a we had the panel at san diego comic-con um, that was like yeah. all Filipino creators, but we would love absolutely in the future to do something with like all women and show, because obviously it's, you know, of course a male dominated industry, but sure, there yeah. are a lot of, you know, females out there that love the medium as well. And I think um, oh, absolutely supporting that as well, just women mm -hmm. in general in the medium is, is really exciting because yeah, you know, so many other stories just, you know, tell. Yeah, I've met a lot of like female writers, obviously a lot of female artists, but uh, you're the first actual comic book company that is all obviously all Asian. I think you've got to be probably the only one, but all Asian, all female or all female in general. You're the first one. And I was super excited when I, I walked by the booth. There was a sign that said that I'm like, wow, that's very unique. And so that's why I approached was really because of that sign. And then obviously seeing the comic book and talking to you, um, I was just like, yeah, I got to I got to jump on this. So I'm glad that I did. And I'm glad that I got to meet all of you. Um, especially today, but, uh, um, yeah, super exciting. And, uh, but you just, it, you could tell that indie comics are very strong right now. I do believe comic books in general are struggling a little bit. Um, and, and manga and anime have really taken a big bite out of it. Um, and there's a reason for that, right? I think the storytelling is a little bit better. Um, obviously the animation that goes with, especially, um, you know, Netflix, Crunchyroll, I, they just do such a good job of ensuring that not only do you have the the written form of it, you could also watch it. And I'm a big Berserker fan, so oh, I, I nice. Oh, guts, I, <laughs> love, I have a guts right down here. I just I think it's one of the best. I love Chainsaw Man. I mean, there's so many really good stuff out there. So I understand the popularity of it. Um, and my daughter will not read a comic book. Um, she'll once in a while watch like a Marvel or DC film for me, but she's in her room late at night watching Crunchyroll constantly. So, uh, you know, Girl after my own art. yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. We, we're trying to emulate that style to be honest. Because, yeah. Well, we, yeah, our, our style, as you can see, is kind of a little different. There's like it, some airbender influences. Yeah. <laughs> um, and on top of that, we are kind of, fulfilling this kind of liminal space where we're not full on like we're not operating out of japan or south korea or yeah. anything like that. right but you know the majority of us well we are all asian women mm -hmm. um and oh i can't say anything without revealing stuff from the future so maybe yeah I'll yeah well don't do anything that will get you in trouble <laughs> caitlin and, and we'll like, stand... yeah. what, what i love to do <laughs> though is yeah <laughs> let's yeah let's not get you kicked yeah. out of the team here caitlin all right no, but let's, uh, we'll just... 
just look forward to the future. That, that's exactly. just exactly. And I would yeah. love to have you all back on too when there is news that is more open to be able to share. Um, yeah. Anything we could do to kind of help spread the word, I think, would be a lot of fun as well. Yes. Well, what I will say and yes. announce here on your podcast, Tommy, is that yeah. um, our Kickstarter page is wow. officially live. Oh, um, wow. Oh, and it, you just got this information. Yes. Our, That's awesome. just in, we are live. Back to you, Waverly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, did, did you just, just hold your ear? Yeah. <laughs> it's coming in right now. I was like, is oh, live. I it's landed. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> so, is awesome. Um, yeah, as you guys, uh, if you guys have seen us at the conventions, we've been currently selling our exclusive uh, volume one graphic novel, which is comprised of issues one through five mm -hmm. as a convention exclusive only being sold at the uh, remaining conventions that we're at this year. Um, because of our uh, partnership with Clover, we have excited to we have decided to release um, a deluxe version of this graphic novel that will be available nationwide, which is super exciting. It's going to also be volume one with uh, issues one through five, as well as an additional art book, um, other art, uh, different different pages than um, even what's currently in our um, convention one. And it's going to be about a little bit bigger and uh, perfect uh, for Christmas time and the holiday nice. season. Yes. Um, so definitely hop on that bandwagon, <laughs> help support us and um, yeah, get some pasalubongs for um, the holiday <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Like, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. That's yeah. our yeah Filipino. Our yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I can't tell you how happy I am to get to meet all of you again in person. Thank you so much for being willing to come on the show. Um, super excited for the future, and uh, you're welcome anytime you want to come back. Um, really enjoyed the episode, and I hope you did too. Yeah, um, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Really appreciate it. Until next time, everyone have a great night, okay?